Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folari. Hope you had a great weekend. Okay, we heard late in the, you know, after the Friday program that um, a, cent uh, a high court, you know, a high court in uh, what? Umuahia? Yes, Umuahia. Because that's the voice of Libros Oshoma, who is my guest this morning. A high court in uh, Umuahia, you know, uh, has actually uh, nullified section 84, subsection 12. Uh, of the Electoral Act. And that's the uh, one, as you recall, uh, that was about um, whoever intended, if he was a public servant, whoever intended to participate uh, had to first of all give up his position. Uh, the President has said that uh, the National Assembly should look into that and uh, find a way of expunging it. The National Assembly, again, as you know, has decided against that. We all saw the vote. We heard the vote. We saw it on television. Okay, it looks like, not that it looks like, the authorities seem to have now gone, even though they're in Abuja, they've gone to Umuahia, and they got a judgment in Umuahia, in Umuahia saying, take it out. Well, we hear that the National Assembly is uh, studying the matter. They've invited all sorts of um, heavy-duty canons to advise them on what the next step is. Um, so, uh, well, good morning to you, <laughs> Libras. Good, good morning. morning. Uh, well, just to refresh our memories. This vexatious, if that is the word to use, yeah. 8412, section 84, subsection 12. Um, do you have it close by there? Yes. Uh, no, section 8412. Oh, sorry. That's on what, the, on that's the, um, the amended. Of, of the amended electoral act. Yes. So the question issue here for this section 8412 really is the fact that, um, let, let, you know we discussed this matter extensively in the course of um, the amendment. Mm -hmm. And uh, the position was that the issue really had nothing to do with you and I. It is the battle for the soul of the political party um, between the legislature and the executive. And, and so the first step was the introduction of um, the direct primaries. Because there's this argument by the legislature that direct primaries, indirect primaries, you know, uh, empowers the governors to have more delegates than others. Because the moment you are appointed a, a essay to essay to essay, <laughs> you automatically become a statutory delegate during okay. primaries at the local government level, at the state level. And so with that, if a governor has 2,000 essays, for example, he determines who gets what, when, and how. And so for the legislature, they decided that, look, let everybody go to the feed in your area of strength and contest for primaries, so um, uh, direct primaries. So for them, they would um, naturally be preaching to their converts, that's their supporters. When that didn't see the light of the day, so this section um, 8412 was um, um, also, I wouldn't use the word smuggled in, section 8412 was left in the act to the effect that for you as a political appointee, of the government because the target really is those statutory delegates for you to vote and be voted for during primaries not during election now, during primaries you must resign your position and the moment you resign as SA you are no longer your, a statutory you, you must resign your position as a public officer yes as a public officer you are no the moment you resign you are no longer a statutory delegate so that makes you an honorary member so you cannot vote in or that primaries for. or be voted for no you can be voted for if you are contesting for any position but if you are not contesting for any position that that automatic delegates that position that cloaks you with automatic delegate the moment it is removed for you to participate in the in the primaries you must resign as a as a essay if you are not participating there you become automatic delegate so those that's what the issue the quagmire and then the president advised that that section be looked into, that the conflict with the powers of freedom of assembly and association. As enshrined in the Constitution. And enshrined in section 40. And then the National Assembly unanimously defeated that amendment after it was assented to. And then, curiously, um, the Attorney General cried foul on Wednesday. And then on Tuesday, by Thursday, there was a judgment of... Um, a federal high court in Numahia. And so people are asking the question, when was this action filed? <laughs> How long did it, was the matter head as party? For a matter of such nature, 
wouldn't it have been better to, you know, put all parties, interested parties in the matter on notice? Take, for example, the National Assembly. So would it he'd have been, and then also you have the Attorney General residing in Abuja, the domicile in Abuja, the presidency, the National Assembly. Why not? Usually we know them to file such cases in Abuja. Why not go to Abuja? And then also um, uh, all the interested parties, likely interested parties in the matter, would have been put on notice. And then lastly, the chief, the chieftain of the AA, that is the claimant or the plaintiff in this matter. Is he also a public servant or a public uh, uh, um, official that is appointed by data, by this, uh, that is affected by that amendment to warrant the court cloaking him with locus to say, okay, yes, you can challenge this section because it will affect you. And then also another curious question is the fact that you now begin to ask yourself that the um, uh, interpretation that the court gave to it. The court said the constitution by virtue of section 66 and other sections cited had made provisions for such a scenario. And if you look at section 66 one, it says that no person shall be qualified for election to the Senate or the House of Rep if he's a person employed in the public service of the Federation or, or of any state and has not resigned, withdrawn or retired from such employment 30 days before the date of election. So it is this section that the court is relying on now to mm -hmm. say, look, already that the constitution has made provision. The constitution says you must resign at least one month before election. So. Despite the superior court authority that uh, political appointees are not public servants, uh, uh, civil servants for the purpose of this interpretation, is the court now saying that these political appointees are also public servants, that this section applies to them? So if this section applies to them, can they, are you now saying they must resign? at least one month because the superior court has said no they cannot because they are not public servants mm -hmm. for the purpose of this section and so if the section doesn't apply to them can you say the national assembly does not have power to make law to apply to the section of the people that this law didn't apply to these are the questions that this court of appeal it will be very interesting for the court of appeal to answer because these are the, the judgment you know, throws up more questions than answer. Throws up more questions than answer. You know, and also as we go along, first of all, the president signed this into law, and that very action uh, turned it into a law. And then days later, uh, we have this situation. The questions will be asked as to so why did the president sign it into the law? The president realize this he doesn't need anybody to tell him that the moment he puts his signature to that thing assenting to it it becomes law yeah. so he he, he he was doing and then would have the attorney general and co come and undo no the, the, the issue going? you remember the last time we discussed this matter we said because of time mm -hmm. that it would be necessary for the president to assent to the electoral act so that INEC can begin to make preparations yes. for the election. So if there is any areas that he is not <laughs> okay with, okay. then he can ask for amendment. Okay. So which is what the president did. Which so that did I immediately. Did, exactly. Yeah, so that yeah. the INEC can start preparation. So but the area he didn't agree with, he had asked for an amendment and the National Assembly said no. No. So if the court no, is to decide on that area, they, I think the court should have given opportunity for a robust interrogation okay. from all interested parties. And you know I'm going to come back to you because I'm no. No, no, I'm going to ask you to tell us what's in section 251. That's the powers of the Federal High Court. Section 1. So, so that's the powers of the Federal High Court. There you go. So we will, I'll come back. Good morning, Mr. George. Okay, Yuri, good morning. Good I'm morning. Greetings to Libros. Yes. Yeah, good morning. Okay, Yuri, this is the first time I'm hearing that this type of thing can happen in a democracy. I thought they said there's a separation of powers. The legislature is for lawmaking, the executive is for execution of the laws, and the judiciary is to interpret laws. Mm -hmm. But for the, the uh, legislative arm to make a law, and the judiciary nullifying the law, which one do we believe now? Is it the judiciary that is now making laws just because the country's attorney general does not like the law? It's not favorable to him personally because of his personal wishes. I think the judiciary 
is making mockery of this our democracy. And the uh, at, uh, who's the head of the judiciary now? Um, the Chief Justice of Nigeria should take action on this matter and call the judiciary his men to order, or himself should resign. What kind of a country is this, Uncle Yori? Well, that laws should be made to please one individual. If that individual is not happy with it, it must change okay. to suit his whims and caprices. Oh, no. All right, then. Am Thank, I you. Thank you very much, no, uh, Mr. I, George. I think Mr. George um, also um, got some few things wrong. Mm -hmm. Such as? Yeah. Um, the court, by virtue of Section 6, is empowered to look into any laws or matters that are brought before them, interrogate such matters, and in some cases, the court can invalidate a section of the law if it's in conflict with a superior law. So it is not out of place for a court to invalidate a section. In, in, there are so many sections of the Electoral Act before now that the court had invalidated. So, and then, in invalidating it, once the section is invalidated, it's invalidated. You don't now tell the Attorney General, that's where the problem is. You don't now tell an Attorney General to go and delete. Because you're empowering the Attorney General now. You're cloaking with the, with the borrowed powers that he doesn't have. That's where a lot of people are confused. That asking the Attorney General to go and delete means that you're asking him, you're cloaking him with the powers of a lawmaker, which he doesn't have. But that the court has powers, inherent powers, to invalidate any section of the law. And that is why you hear the court say that this law, to the extent of its inconsistency, mm -hmm. is hereby declared null and void. All right, then. So um, leaves it at that. Uh, Martins in Port Harcourt. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Thank you for calling in. Go ahead, sir. You can hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, if I may ask you, who are the parties to that? Um, are the parties? To One the, chief, Uduka, and um, um, Anthony General. Then why? Okay, the Attorney General will know it's already biased about this, the particular session. Yes, yes. So why should he be a part to it? It would definitely be a necessary. Will he, will, he, will, he, will he speak for or against it? He's already against it, so we'll know his position. Why should he be a party to it? Exactly. All right, and after six seconds, they, they give a judgment in Nigeria, okay, now in Nigeria. Well, it doesn't happen that way now. It doesn't happen that way. It doesn't happen that way. You know, the courts should try as much as they can to, like, the judges of odes, like the Coyote Assures of this world, had always consistently admonished in cases like this. You ask all parties. I was to going be, to ask you, to be put, I was going to ask to you that you ask they didn't that bring the, all the parties. The National the, Assembly is a party. You know, uh, INEC uh, is a party. Uh, and that's why some people are pointing accusing finger now that this is forum shopping. And then also that ordinarily you should bring the people that will be affected by this decision. INEC will be affected, even though they are umpires. Um, also, um, the National Assembly that made the law also would be affected, even if you want to invalidate and expunge, that order should have been directed at them. And so allow all parties robust deliberations or argument okay. on the matter. And then, quickly, last, lastly, you also hear the fact that some people have argued that the right to vote is inalienable. But they are, all, as far as those rights are in, inalienable, they are also rights that are limited. And that is why there are provisions in the law limiting your right to contest and be uh, to vote and be voted for okay. you know uh, uh, INEC also is empowered to put certain structures and instructions in place hurdles that you must cross and also all of us as people we can i can't say because rights of to vote and be voted for an inalienable and then i want votes in a party primaries that i'm not a member of the political party mm -hmm. so these are the issues that i think that did. You know, all um, of this should have been in, taken in, care of thank you uh, and indeed that's why we wanted you in here because lawyers will understand it and uh, to the rest of us it would just seem like legal games they've started the legal games again yes yes they've i started agree. the legal games again I and suddenly there's a law and within days uh, it's a, a, the law is being tailored shall we say you know it's being chiseled the ones that are you know odious are being chiseled out good morning sir mr joshua in irewali oh, we are a good morning sir Th thank you for calling good morning me. to your guest libros uh, the word uh, Ongiori, the word delete came the shock delete Hello? Hey, we can hear you. Please continue. 
that that word delete came to me as a shock, asking the uh, attorney general to delete. How? <laughs> uh, uh, we only well, use, uh, yeah, era, uh, unless delete is the, nullification is as good as deleting. Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Lord, that that was what uh, showed that something was fishing. Yeah. This this uh, era of supermarket uh, judgment buying men from the supermarket. That is the one now that is going to score to 2023. Buying judgment from hmm. supermarket. Who were the parties joined to that uh, uh, judgment? That's a problem. 24 hours. We want quick, quick dispensation of this. But this one, quick, quick, Abuja, uh, something. We, 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 within 12 hours, deleted. Okay, good one for judicial shown that it can be done. But can we now go ahead and explain how this matter miraculously happened? Who were the parties joined <laughs> to this matter? Who were the parties? Oh, let let uh, uh, our uh, great lawyer there help us. Who were the parties? Liberal, sir. Who were the Liberal, parties? sir, was surprised. <laughs> it, uh -huh. I Liberal didn't know that there was a okay. federal high court. Th th thank you very much. But I didn't know that there was sorry, a federal sir, high court. Before you launch, I wanted to ask you, please wrap in your answer. Umwahia. Yes, I didn't know that in there was Umwahia a federal high court, court in Umwahia. I've appeared, so, I've handled uh, matters. Uh, uh, sorry, Attorney General is in Abuja. The uh, presidency is in Abuja. But they, they, they looked around. Why is it that they I've always go to the southeast when they want to do this kind of thing? That is the question a lot of people are asking. And I've handled matters in Umwahia also. I didn't know until that um, last week that there was a federal high court in Umwahia <laughs> also. <laughs> and then, fortunately, the senior advocate for the plaintiff, I mean, the claimant, this is my classmate and my friend. Mekao um, Zwani, SAN. My friend. My, we worked together at some point. So, and these are, I tried reaching him since that day to at least also <laughs> find out what transpired. Because from what I learned, the matter was, and then when I read the order, the drawn up order, I was further confused because the ordinarily when a judge, you know, gives an order and then you're drawing up the order, it says after listening to argument of counsel for the applicant or counsel or argument on both sides. The court said after due consideration. So you now begin to ask yourself. Which one is so, due consideration? Exactly. Again? So after due consideration. So which one is due consideration? Was it that there was no argument at all on both sides? Okay. And, let, and, let, let, sorry, sir. Let's hear from Reverend Dominic. Good morning, Reverend Dominic uh, in Alimo Show. Good morning, Chief Yori. Good morning, Dr. Libros. <laughs> uh, uh, Dr. Dominic, I greet you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yori. Our nation, our nation is a wonderful one. So let me give you a picture. Few days ago, few days ago, <laughs> few <laughs> days ago, one of the men that went to NGLA to negotiate for his drug business, Akari, took Nigeria to court for, you know, for what they call his personal rights. Now, the judge in Swiss said, well, you have a right to come here. But let's put NGLA you know, to notice. Let's put your federal government to notice. Let them come here. Let's argue you are a human right. And it's not the way common sense should apply to anything. If the uh, Attorney General and his cohorts have gone to Mwaya for God, is it not common sense for the judge to say, let's put INEC, let's put National Assembly, let's hear them before we give you the judgment. They call it in the morning before evening, the judgment is given. I told somebody they should go to Sokoto and get cancer, uh, you know, uh, of that cause. If you go to Sokoto, you know yes. where Sokoto is. You know what yes. in Sokoto. If you approach Sokoto today, a big court in Sokoto, they will the story will be different. But this nation is sitting on keg of compound that we are in a yeah. serious note. Yeah. Thank you, very, thank you very much, Reverend Dominic. And that's why I referred to it uh, from my uh, uh, unlearned position as legal games have started again. Yes. If you remember, when Oshomole was ousted as national chairman, a court in Abuja gave order. By the next week, another court in Kebi gave another order. And then you had another one from Kaduna. Recently also, when during the Abga crisis, there was one court in, um, I think, uh, Anambra gave one order. The, another court in Kebi gave one, and then one in Ibadan also gave. Then um, also, if you also remember, yeah, this was the recent one now. Umahi, Federal High Court Abuja gave order. And then uh, High Court 
in uh, Eboni. The matter was filed a day before, and then by the next day, he, he gave an order. You know, so all of this forum shopping, if yeah. care is not okay, taken. That, that's, that's what it is. If the, that, that is what it is known yes, as. Yes, lawyers. yes. Forum shopping. Forum shopping. If, if the judiciary, the politicians do not destroy the judiciary, nothing will because destroy the judiciary. Been, and now people are beginning to say, why the judiciary is the judiciary the last to be kicked around exactly. like, a door, uh, like a ball? People are saying, is the judiciary the last or the lost hope of the common man now? And so the moment people begin to ask those questions, mm. instead of last hope, people are saying lost hope, mm. then there is a problem. And I think stakeholders need to sit down and begin to look at this issue. But unfortunately, lawyers also, typically, we are all divided also on both sides. Ah, because there are mm. people, there are senior lawyers, you know, for and against. Uh, for, for for and against. against. Uh, Kyle Day in the UK. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Uncle Yori, and good morning to uh, Mr. Libros or Shama. Thank you. Yes, Ashima. Now, can you help me to add um, Lagos, please, to define clearly for, because we've listened from other stations, what public appointee and civil servant or office servant is. Shortly, I would like to get answered to that. And again, sir, well, um, the only thing that I, I'm sure we're not all surprised, even though uh, Lagos said he was shocked, because this is the season, like you said, Uncle Yori, of <laughs> getting legal gains, going to shop right to get judgment or <laughs> anywhere you can find it. But oh dear. People were saying yesterday, even at the football match, that, well, the attorney general know where to go to get that judgment. And the best place in the whole of this country is to go to the state where the governor was bought, was imposed to them by the Supreme Court. So it's, no, it's, 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 it's close to everybody. That that is the best place for them that they can get a judgment that's under one hour. Uh, but Libras is uh, li Libras is making some clarification, you know, under his breath here. Uh, you, what were you saying about? Yeah, it? That's not the state. The state, uh, the Supreme Court governor is in Imo State. Sorry for using that word. Um, the state is in Abia State. Umuahia is in Abia well, State. That, okay. Well, uh, no, no, but but it's just the no, next state governor. is the next state uh, I'm to. I'm sorry. In the, in the governor um, uh, who, who, who was, the, was the number four governor. It was put in there on, by, by the Supreme Court. Okay. So let me quickly okay. clarify the well, issues th here. Uh, Kaudi, thank you very much. I, is that it? I mean, thank you very much for calling in, Kaudi. In so many court of appeal, rounding yes. up, because um, we've not seen the end of mm. this, because we understand that the um, National Assembly is putting together its legal team to, to advise mm. it on how to yeah. proceed. In, um, in so many um, legal authorities, uh, superior court authorities, the courts had because he says here, he says you shall not be qualified if you are a person employed in the public service of the Federation of any state and has not resigned, withdrawn or retired from such employment 30 days before the date of his uh, election. If you remember, to explain this further, during Fire Miss uh, tenure as a minister, he wanted to contest for election and then I think somebody went to court to say he didn't resign before 30 days to disqualify him. The Court of Appeal in its wisdom said, for the purpose of this section, that fire me cannot be said to be a public in public service of the Federation of any state. And because so because he was he was elected. He was no, he was That's not a, the appointed. He was an appointee. Oh, okay. As a minister, he's an appointee. Okay. And okay. being an appointee yeah. Yeah. that yeah. you yeah. are not yeah. Employed in the public service because the word is employed in the public service. You are an appointee. You are not employed in the public service. So if this judgment is saying that the law has covered the feeds, are you now saying that those people who are appointee that the court, the law already says that you have thirty days to re re either resign or retire before the election. So this law does not include political appointees. If you are now saying that the law already says that it's 30 days, so are you now saying that these political appointees are part of people who are employed in the public service, service contrary to the provision, contrary to the decision of the Court of Appeal, a superior court? So if that is the position, then it creates a problem. It means that everybody, the National Assembly is saying you resign because of primaries. The man now is saying, the judge now is saying, look, you resign for election, whether political appointee or uh, employed the public service. But if that is not the case, 
this law having made provision for only those employed in the public service can the national assembly have powers to make laws for those that are not employed in the public service who are political appointees not employed since the constitution did not cover that feed hmm. let me quickly use hmm. it in everyday very, layman's very, language very very quickly layman's because language because quickly. Because it's, it's just very... like it's just like um, um, this uh, section 68 and section 109 that says if you're a member of the National Assembly or the State House of Assembly and that you are elected on the platform yeah, of a political party and then you cross carpet to another party, you lose your seat. And about for the governorship, there is no clear cut provision in the constitution that says this is what will happen. Even though there's no provision that says you, you can defect, there's no provision also that says you cannot defect. Uh, you, if you defect, this is what should happen. But if the Electoral Act now makes provision to cover that of the governor, can you say that because it, the Constitution already talks about the uh, National Assembly and so the Electoral Act, any provision in the Electoral Act is invalidated because it is not covered in the Constitution? So that is the crisis here that I think the judge would have enriched his judgment and himself by listening to all parties interested in the matter. That's what some judges do even in Lagos. Even parties that are not before them, they will ask for se senior superior opinion, uh, a legal opinion on a matter before they, they, they delve into it. Okay, we, we, we wait to see how this goes because um, uh, we read in the press that the National Assembly um, has, you know, beckoned on senior lawyers uh, to give their considered advice as the best way to proceed. This is one free one that we have given them here. We, exactly. <laughs> and I want to thank you very much for it, Libros. My pleasure. Uh, Barrister Lira, Libros Oshama, political affairs uh, analyst and legal practitioner. Okay.